Hello and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of November 21st. I'm Terry Morrow and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we continued with our watch of Brothers and Sisters, and it was time for the Dancing with the Stars Season 31 finale, and that is why we are here with you live instead of giving you another rerun today. Yay! <laughs> so, I don't know about you, but I thought these finals were just so much fun. I really liked the way they did that. I really liked all the involvement of the people we've forgotten were on this show. Yes, I really liked that, too. They had Not only... Off. They got them to dance. They get name checked. Not only did they get to make quotes in a video, not only did they get to dance, but they got to stand around in the skybox (laughs) and get their faces on TV while or on on Disney Plus while other people were talking. Wow. That was so cool. I really like that. Mm-hmm. And that and like with the the sort of the goodbye to Cheryl and the video for that and the video for goodbye to Len, there was just a real feeling of continuity. Mm-hmm. Like, of a, you know, you saw lots of former people who were on this show talking about it. And uh, it was just a really big old family feeling. And I liked that a lot. Uh, you know, I don't think they've had time to do that in the past. I can't remember whether they have to such a degree. Right. Um, but they should. They should They should let people – I wonder how much it would cost to get everybody who's eliminated to just come back once a week. They don't have to learn to dance. They just have to put on a costume and stand around. Mm-hmm. So that you're eliminated, but you don't actually have to go home. You can come back. Right. Not just in the audience, but, you know, loitering. I imagine for some people they – would not want to. <laughs> That's true. If they're not based in LA, it wouldn't work out. But right. I would guess there's some of those folks who don't have a, who have a lot of time on their hands who might want to just stop by every Monday, yeah. you know, and uh, stand in the background. Um, For sure. It just made it so much fun to like yeah. have like the family feeling of it, um, and I was I was fine with the winner. Well, I mean, we were. There was sort of never any question who who the winner was going to be. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) Yeah, so I think it it wound up to be exactly in the order I said their names last week. So that's how predictable it was. Um, But uh, ah, Charlie won me over in the end. I was was happy she won not just because I wanted Gabby to not, but also because, yeah, she seems like a nice kid. Yeah, I mean, and they... They definitely took a risk with the freestyle being yes, like really like we are going to showcase exactly how good she is. Right. We are not going to have a single other thing yes. going on. Um, and I think it worked. I think it worked too. And also this, the, the package before it where uh-huh. it talked about both she and Mark had had their mm-hmm. sort of doubts and their you know, times when they didn't love dance. Yeah. Um, that was, that was uh, compelling. I thought. Yeah, it was. And you know what, with a different contestant, I might not have bought it, Mm -hmm. but she is so flat and young and unactorly. Right. That I don't think she could have done it if it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe she's just, just real good at acting like that. But, um, it really seemed genuine. And I mean, it's it's got to be hard to be a young person who's extremely successful on social media. I mean, yeah. you could say, hey, this is, a, this is the gig you picked, kid. Yeah. Toughen up. But still, right. it is very vulnerable. Right. And, uh, you know, and she is a lovely dancer. And it's just after the other three were so busy. And yes. theirs was just simple and lovely and funny and cute and just extremely well done. So, uh-huh. you know, applause to Mark for coming back and and orchestrating this win. Good for you, man. Right. Um, and he's, you know, he's he's had other, I think, young contestants who maybe have not won but maybe should have. And so I'm glad this worked out. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, as for... Uh, Wayne's was fine. This is, I guess we're talking about the finales first and not the the redemption thing, but Wayne's the was okay. The freestyles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 
I mean, Shangela, if you're going to have a drag queen as a contestant, you've got to have a drag show by the end. It's just right. probably preordained that she was going to be in the finale just so they could do that. And <laughs> fine, you know, I hope Gleb got a little bonus in his pay for this week, but still. Um, but Cell Block Tango? Really? Yeah. It's... It's, that was Gabby's. I mean, it's, it's a, an extremely fun song in the context of the musical Chicago mm-hmm. when you have the lyrics and, I mean, when you have the stories that go with the, the words that keep getting repeated. Right. But if you don't, it's just weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was Gabby's and that was And I, I was watching not it. fun. I was watching it with... Um, my son, the musical theater <laughs> child, yeah. uh-huh. and then my cousin also who's visiting. And yeah. now I can't remember which one of them said. Um, But then they're like, but it's already like a song made to be danced to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's already a song that, not that they didn't have original choreography, which yes. of course they did, uh-huh. but. It's not like a pop song that it's wide open in terms of how you're going to dance to it. Yeah. It already has a history (laughs) as a dance performance number. Yes. Performed by people who are really good dancers. Yes. I I just never, I always felt a certain tentativeness to, to Gabby's dances, and apparently nobody else did because she's just gone all the way. But whenever I watch her dance, I'm like not that good. (laughs) Not as good as Charlie. She should not be getting the same scores as Charlie. Right. right. Um, So I was, you know, I had decided already going in that I was going to vote for Charlie in the hopes that that she would beat Gabby. But by the end of of the after those four uh, freestyles, I felt like she was far and away Mm -hmm. the most enjoyable to watch and the best of that bunch. So... I was yeah. I was uh, satisfied when she won, right? But you know, Shangela's Shangela's freestyle did have Sasha dressed as a chicken leg. Yes, my a chicken favorite leg part with bling. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry if this may it's, it's probably politically incorrect to say so, but my favorite part of that dance was Sasha and the chicken chicken leg. <laughs> And then he kept it on for the whole rest. Of the yes, show. exactly. That <laughs> and was he the kept best sort of like you know, <laughs> sashaying through the frame. Like here I am, still. Which we head. know he loves to do. Yes. Yeah, yes. he did that when he was. Was he the the shark in the? Oh, this may have been before your time. There was that whole Katy Perry Super Bowl thing, right, with the oh, left yeah, shark yeah, or yeah. something like that. And I think they redid it on Dancing with the Stars, and he was he I was in I a shark outfit that. of some sort, and yeah. just kind of constantly. Mm-hmm. There was also a weird moment where I think all the pros were doing a dance or some section of the pros were doing a dance and everybody had a partner except him and he was just sort of dancing around. Then Emma kind of came up behind him and draped herself over him and then went off. And I'm like, what's going on here? Right. I need, I need a subtext helper. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. But he seems he seems to be very chipper this season. So good for him. Yes. Even though he had the difficulty of his partner having to drop out, and I don't know what the heck is going on in their personal life, we probably should not care or even know. Right. But uh, he generally has a smile on his face. So. Right. Many many social media posts about his dogs. Mm-hmm. So. He's he's living the single life. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But. So anyway. should we should we go back and briefly talk about the, the redemption the redemption dances? Yeah. Sure. Well, <laughs> I've already forgotten them, but let me see. I had notes. First was Wayne doing a quick step. I didn't uh-huh. have any notes about that. <laughs> it was fine, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then Shangela also did a uh, quick step, which again yeah. I had. I thought it was kind of interesting that they they put her in like pants and a vest and like not. <laughs> you know, the same shoes as Gleb was wearing, like (laughs) they weren't quite, I mean, she still looked feminine, but they weren't like leaning into, they were saving it all for the free stuff. Yeah, Yeah, this is true. Yeah. But my only note on that was that there was so much faffing about at the start, Mm -hmm. Um, but it picked up about halfway through and was just delightful. So, um, and then I, 
I and for Charlie and Mark they did a jive and yeah. uh <laughs> we were saying in my little watch party, you know, yeah. she that they said something about needing to see the movement. Uh-huh. And we were like, well, with those pants, yeah. <laughs> It, it, you know, yeah. she barely had to sway a little, right. a step, and you got movement because she yes. had the, the fringed pants. The fringed so. pants, but I think that was the least shimmy I've ever seen in those fringed pants. Mm-hmm. She doesn't, she doesn't yet know how to work the fringed pants, which right. is just fine, honey. <laughs> but and she, all, they did also praise her for um, her emotional work on that mm-hmm. one, and. It was a jive. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it wasn't even for a dead relative or anything. It no, was just a jive. It was just a jive. But she like, did. I mean, we were talking earlier in the season. It looks she just wasn't, wasn't making any connection. She was just sort of doing the steps, but but not emoting at all. She emoted right. a little. She emoted yeah. a lot for her. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it I was just to- funny to me, like, what's the most emotional ballroom dance? <laughs> gotta be the jive (laughs) well she did that dance about her anxiety which was very emotional but no i know um, that's why i just yeah i just thought it was the jive is a funny choice (laughs) yeah i have to give credit where it's due here i was very hard on heidi when she was a contestant in this show but now that she's just a mom Mm -hmm. she's pretty cute (laughs) <laughs> here in the background a lot of the time. She's just so happy for her and, you know, <laughs> sneaking in to give a little stealth hug from the back. And, right. Um, you know, that's I like her much better as the uh, uh, supportive mom than mm-hmm. as a contestant. So mm-hmm. I really wonder what the story was about them both being on. Right. I always thought it was that Heidi wanted to do it and but could only do it with the kid. So she brought the kid along and the kid was not so into it. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. Maybe she felt she wanted that this would be good for Charlie to get her confidence up. I don't know. Right. So she did it, but you know, I, I had I had mom fellow feeling for her last night, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> it's very cute. Yeah. And, and Gabby did a cha cha, um, complete with the feathered anklets and the oh. feathered skirt. <laughs> The anklet fringe was distracting. It made her feet look clunky, I think. Muppety, yes. Yeah, it was not. And at some point at the beginning, Val said something like, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of trying to make the clear front runners not look like front runners on this. Right. You know, with uh, Charlie and being such an underdog, you know, and <laughs> she's going to try to do it. And then Gab- Val said something like to Gabby, like, you're exactly what this show is about. Just a normal person coming into dance. And I'm like, oh, Val, she's not a normal person. <laughs> Come on, man. You're exactly what the show is about. We have a bachelorette or a bachelor every <laughs> <Exactly>. season. <laughs> But, you know, they're doing all this, you know, it's really a contest. We're really trying to, you know, you know can, are they going to make it? What's going to happen? And then like, it's like, you know, Wayne and Shangela get all nines and Gabby and, and uh, Charlie get all tens. It's like, right. we see clearly there are, there are in the running and also Rans here. Uh-huh. And that's exactly the way it panned out. But yes. uh we love you, show. You keep putting out that line of bull. <laughs> we'll we'll laugh at it. That's fine. That's right. We but, see what you're uh, doing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, also in Gabby's cha cha, at one point they said, I think it was Carrie Ann who said, "You had real gravitas." <laughs> and I was like, "She's doing a cha cha wearing feathered anklets. What are where?" Okay. I I fast forwarded through the judges' comments on the first round, so I didn't hear those. That is hilarious. Yes, that is hilarious. Now you know. <laughs> Gravitas. Yep. I do not that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> oh dear! And the whole time, Len's going. I'm gonna be so glad to be done with this. <laughs> I'm out of here. He did seem genuinely pleased to get his very own mirror ball. He did. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, I just, I liked all that stuff. Yeah. At one point, Tyra announced 
that Derek and Haley would not be doing a dance. Yeah. There was going to be a dance, but Haley is injured, apparently, because she yeah. was there, apparently not ill. Why mention it at all? I right. Wonder? And and I thought you would at least say, you know, so instead we yeah. are going to do X or Y. No. It right. Was just, it was just, <laughs> hope, you, hope you feel better soon. Yes. Yeah, so we just wanted to show Haley and Jenna sitting there in the spouses section. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jenna got to thank Gabby for making her husband's dreams come true, which is a little, <laughs> little upsetting. Yes. But, okay. <laughs> you know. Jenna's pretty confident, I think, mm-hmm. in her marriage, apparently. Right. <laughs> oh, well. And, you know, it's not like Val's never won. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, if you're feeling like you're going to miss Gabby, she's going to be on all the tour dates. That's right. Apparently there's not another Bachelor-related property for her to at- be in in the next six to eight months. So she's going to go on tour. Right. And uh, along with Daniel's doing some dates, Charlie's doing some dates. Vinny. And Vinny is doing some <laughs> dates. I love, love it. it. That's the one I would go to. He just, what a little ray of sunshine he is. Every time mm-hmm. they caught him on camera, he was smiling or doing something supportive or patting somebody on the back or, right. um, you know, he was fun. I never knew who he was before this. And now I will, mm-hmm. um, you know, Keep have track. a... Yes, have a positive feeling about him anyway. Right. But uh, at the end when they were picking picking uh, Charlie and Mark up, I noticed that Joseph and somebody else picked up uh, Mark. But honestly, yes. Joseph could have really done it by himself. <laughs> yes. He could have just had him on one arm. Mark's Alan. not that big a dude. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I said to my my family, like, oh, that's why they needed Joseph on the show. <laughs> Somebody could pick up Mark after. <laughs> yes, he didn't get to have a quote on the on the what this season is meant to me video. Yeah, he and that. Heidi were left out, but mm-hmm. uh, um. Anyway, he was a generally a large smiling presence in the background of many shots. So yes, that's good. I was happy to see him again. Mm-hmm. Really, really hope they keep. I guess as long as they're on Disney Plus, they can do it. They keep the involvement of the. Uh, long illuminated contestants on the finale. On the that finale. Was, that which, was very fun. Which they do on so many of these kind of shows. Yeah. Like, why not? Yeah. I mean, I, I think mean, there's I guess always... you have to fly them all back to L.A. if they don't live there, but... Yeah, I guess so. But I think in the past they've just shown video of all the different... They, they sh- Like they did this time, they had the, the, the video of the past, of their dances yeah, like or the past package. weeks. This mm-hmm. week, that week, whatever. Yeah. But th- to have them there live dancing and then standing around was adorable. And Selma got to do another dance. Yeah. That was very sweet. He just throws her around like she's a Gumby, but mm. <laughs> um, she did. It's always, I mean, it's too bad that things went the way they did with her, although it was probably inevitable. But yeah. I enjoy watching her dance. Yeah. She's a very pretty dancer. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Sasha. Sasha can use a win. I don't know. Speculating about things. But anyway, um, it was a very fun episode. I really enjoyed watching it. Mm-hmm. I had all sorts of plans to do work while I was watching it, and I just sat and looked at the screen. Nice. So that's another season down. Mm-hmm. Will we have another one? Yeah, we'll see. I heard Disney Plus is losing money, so. Yeah, and, uh, you know, at least two people have jumped the sinking ship of Dancing with the Stars this season, so. <laughs> Although, can Cheryl not just decide to come back at some point? Right. I mean, she... I think Len is probably gone. Although, you know, if he's, he keeps in good health, they could make a big thing of him coming back as a guest judge for one episode here and there. Right. But Cheryl could just change her mind, I think. Or could Cheryl fill that seat? Oh, that's a good idea. That's and then they interesting. have then they have two women and yes. they have two former pros. Oh, I think you may have it. That so. is a good idea. Maybe so. she she saw her opportunity when right. Len, when Len right. retired. She's like, oh, hmm, okay. <laughs> did you did you hear the when she did her final dance, Cheryl? 
the introduction of it, I thought they said she's going to dance with some of her favorite pros. And I thought, well, that's a little nasty. But then, yeah, she, I thought she said that that's what they said too. It must have been her favorite performance. It could have been just Tyra said it wrong if she mm. was the one who announced it. Because mm-hmm. she just she danced with Pasha for a minute and then she danced with Louis for the rest of it. And it's like, what, the rest of you? I don't right. like you. <laughs> I don't I can't stand and Pasha's you guys. relatively new, really. He's, he and Louis, I mean, Louis, I could buy being your favorite, but right. um, I, I think maybe it was supposed to be her favorite performance. Mm-hmm. I had first thought that she was going to have like some of the contestants she had danced with would be there. And honestly, yeah. the guys she won with, I, I'm pretty sure would be willing to come on because mm-hmm. I don't think they're doing all that much. Right. But uh um but no. But she certainly seemed to be selling that it was not physical infirmity that was causing her to retire because right. that dance was a little frantic. Um lots of twirls. Yes. So Anyway, Dancing with the Stars, season 31, you were frustrating <laughs> at times. But I think all in all, the move to Disney Plus and the elimination of commercials and the ability to therefore do lots of other cool things uh, was good. And also the same day voting. Mm-hmm. Just that alone makes it worth it. Right. Um, so... I will once again decide whether or not to watch you based on who's on you, but this was a good season. <laughs> <laughs> so since we had to come to you this Thanksgiving week to bring you Dancing with the Stars, we thought we would also bring you another episode of Brothers and Sisters. This one was episode three, Affairs of State, and it is ever so appropriate for your Thanksgiving week <laughs> because the walkers threw a party, and once you see how well that went... Your Thanksgiving dinner will seem very pleasant and tame. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, conveniently, I, I've pulled out a few lines from the episode that you may find a way to work in around your Thanksgiving table. Mm. Like, the world is too fragile for people to be untrue. Life's too short for lies. <laughs> or, alcohol is my gateway to pills. People are my gateway to alcohol. That one might come in handy. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, at the end of the night, when when you're feeling all warm and cozy with the people you love, you could say, we don't love the people we love because they're perfect. We love the people we love because they are. Which also, in this episode, happens to be an awesome pickup line because <laughs> almost immediately after that, yes. Warren and Kitty are, are jump-cutted into a extremely unwise twist. Right. So... Um, you know, this is a service we provide, <laughs> but, uh, you know, golly, does that family f- throw a good party? <laughs> yeah. And it was like the same day she decided to have the party. Right. I mean, <laughs> yes. And, and so all of this is happening, like presumably on a week day, <laughs> And at like whatever ten a.m., she says we're going to have a party tonight. <laughs> she and has a caterer like on speed dial. Speed catering dial. staff. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was something. Yeah, yeah. And it, the, there were like anonymous people at the yeah, table. Yeah, there were extra. Who people are those there? people? <laughs> I mean, you got all your brothers and sisters and their spouses, and you have that woman who was having an affair with my husband, and you have her brother and North Scotty. Mom. And, and Scotty and uh, and Warren, and but not Fawn. Not, not Fawn. Not Where was Fawn? Fawn? She wasn't invited. She's in the pool. You know, she just <laughs> said, "Your family's a little much. I'm just gonna. I got me some taquitos here on my raft, and I'm just gonna right. stay. I'll just stay in the pool. Yeah, I, I have. To, I, I don't want to argue with Kitty. She's having a difficult time. But if somebody says, "Should we give them the taquitos as I walk in?" The only answer to that is. Yes, yes. I want serve the me the taquitos immediately. I don't make me wait for taquitos. Yeah, you know, ta- taquito me, taquito me now, <laughs> and pass me the mango peach salsa. Right. Um, that yeah, that's another one you could you could adapt a line from here. There was something about I think the the party was described as torture and taquitos, and you can of course just change that to torture and turkey. So. Right. <laughs> It was unmitigated torture and taquitos was the oh. one, so. 
Yeah. You know, we've we've all we've all been there mm-hmm. with the family. Mm-hmm. For sure. But uh um so yes, that was the that was the centerpiece of this this plot by which Saul is trying to get Nora to sign a bunch of stuff away, um, you know, that happened to be because they're trying to raise money for Ohio Foods. Right. Not mentioning why exactly they're why they money. need it. Mm-hmm. They're selling off a bunch of stuff and including this little house. And she's like, oh, that little house. I would like to see that little house. I love Silver Lake. I love that area. And, you know, everybody's going, oh, no. <laughs> and then she goes there and she meets Holly and she looks around. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. And, you know, she's what a great eye and, you have. Yes, you're such just a being. Wonderful and, you know, the whole time you're going, oh, Nora doesn't know. <laughs> Saying and Saul is like you know mm-hmm. pretty much, uh, just you know in hell having to do this cringing and, the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yes, and then uh, Nora comes up with this idea for the uh, well. They they do all finally figure out that hey, you know what? If a little girl's grandpa falls into the pool and dies while she's sitting talk, right there, they're talking mm-hmm. with him. She may have a feeling about pools, so Paige isn't swimming and. Joe points out to Sarah why, and then somebody tells Nora why, and and Nora's answer to this is not therapy, but pool party. We'll have a pool party. Everybody will be having fun at the pool. And Paige will just want to go in, which she does not want to do until her uncle takes off his watch and his wallet, but not his shoes. Not his shoes. (laughs) And jumps in the pool. Jumps in the pool, and then she jumps in the pool. It's very sweet. Yeah, you know, very sweet. But I just, whenever anybody does that in a show, I'm like, you didn't have anything else in your pockets? You don't have, where's your phone? I mean, they didn't have phones then, but it's like, just seems like you could have had a bathing suit on, man. I'm just saying. (laughs) But uh, so then, you know, it was part of the dramatic effect for Paige. It was adorable. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, something weird enough to get Paige to laugh and then be okay with jumping in the pool right um and so she so Nora's having this this pool party with the taquitos and with the caterers, and the caterers and with all this and, stuff yeah. this whole big thing and she just starts inviting random people um or she apparently invites Warren not knowing that Kitty has just slept with him and then Jonathan shows up and it's very awkward mm-hmm. and she invites oh that nice lady from that house that we own and everybody's like, oh no <laughs> Justin has told Kitty, who has told uh, Sarah, you know, Sarah, who has told Kevin, who's, you know, telephone, telegraph, telewalker. Right. So the lifespan of a secret on this in this family is about half a day. Yeah. But so they all know. Oh, no. But the days I might add are extremely long. Yes. Because everything that happens and a lot happens appears <laughs> to all happen in one yes. one and a half days. Yes. <laughs> So anyway, they're they're all sitting around the table and even the anonymous extras who we never get any explanation of who the heck they are, mm-hmm. although they are on camera a fair amount, um, even they are shocked. Oh, no, this is so awkward. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then Warren asks Nora, how come we're the only ones talking? And Nora says, oh, they all think I don't know that that woman over there <laughs> had an affair with my husband for 15 years. And Holly runs off in not so much shame as like, what the bleep. Right. And, you know, I imagine. And then, and then, then Scotty, who has been asking for the mango peach salsa, finally gets it. <laughs> And I imagine the party goes rapidly downhill from there. I don't think we actually see how it ends, but <laughs> no. people finish their taquitos and skedaddle, I think. Right. But uh, And meanwhile, the kids are like inside with a nanny or something because they are not at the table. Yes, the, 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 they the don't party get was for Paige so that she would not be afraid <laughs> of the pool and she's gone. <laughs> Haven't seen her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, the caterer is going to have a good story to tell. It was like the. I noticed that there was this scene where the siblings were all in the kitchen, you know, doing the, oh, no, mom doesn't know thing. And there's like in the corner, there's Scotty and a couple of caterers just right. like, hmm? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I don't know if at this point, but at some point in the series, Scotty worked as a cater waiter. So mm. I, I'm just imagining those are his friends. But right. uh, 
And he probably knows a lot of stuff. He probably (laughs) has a lot of stories. Yep. Keeps his ear open. You know, Kitty's or getting a getting a drink from the bartender and happens to mention what happened between her and Warren. Yeah. And she's just making the mojitos, you know, she's just like, I'm a professional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, is this family a handful. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that the, the, um, the ratings on Kitty's new television show must have shot through the roof when she joined just from all the walkers that are watching it. Right. <laughs> Every family member has it tuned in. No matter That's how what you know doing. that it's the second day because <laughs> on the, at the beginning of the episode, they're watching the show. And then at the end of the episode, they're watching the show again. So yes. now it's 24 hours later. <laughs> but is like, is the show on at like 11 o'clock at night and the kids are still up? <laughs> what I, like when this is what i mean like this party was like after work and yeah. now they're watching the show and yet the kids are still awake like how does time yes. work i'm confused. yes these oh, are the things that i that you notice think about and yes art flow over you <laughs> yes like the waters of a pool that gets mm-hmm. a lot of work Yes. Um, it's a beautiful And there pool. was uh, more, tr- you know, a little bit extra trouble at the business because uh, Sarah had the uh, audacity to fire two people who were just sitting around not working. But Tommy had some whole uh, complicated thing with the printer that if they employed these two losers, they'd get some sort of break on the printing. Right. But apparently nobody saw fit to uh, tell the new head of the company about that. Mm -hmm. And so she has created a mess, which can only be cleaned up by hiring the two layabouts. Could they get Justin that kind of a job? Yeah, right. That's what he needs is you can just go off and and get drunk and take your pills and have a good time and we we will pay you. It's fine. Just I'm surprised that they don't have some try to make him work at the business. (laughs) <laughs> no, you know? I don't think. Yeah, you would think that they would. Right. We have an employer right but here. But maybe they have figured out that that is yes. not a good plan <laughs> for anyone. Yep. So in the end, I guess Nora decides to give Holly the house. But yeah, the way the way that Nora knew it was that she knew fifteen years ago he had affair an affair and. He said he was stopping it, but then when she saw the the deed for this house, she knew that he had bought that house for her. Somehow. Right, which is quite a leap. It is somewhat of a leap, yes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's TV. They only have so much time. They have to. <laughs> exactly. There's so many plot threads they have to do. <laughs> and did- by the end of the episode, Kitty is no longer engaged. Yes. Because she confesses to Jonathan yes. what Who happened. Kind of knew something was up. He figured as much because yes, he has did. two eyes. <laughs> That's right. It's like this this guy this is not a guy who's gonna be up for the drama, Kitty. He's not he's not right for your family. <laughs> right. If you could have just stayed in New York and it'd just be the two of you, that's fine. But right. he likes things neat and the walkers are messy. Yeah, so he, he it was can't never hang. gonna work out, babe. No. Yeah, and I think that he should just run for his life back to New York. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I. Speaking of a mess, I really liked that scene between um, Joe and Sarah at the end, where yes. he was just being very sweet. You know, she says, "And I, when you when you look at me, I hope you see more of my mother than my father." And he says, "I." look at you I see the woman I love oh right and then she says the woman you love is a mess and he said the secret mess and she says not such a secret and he says not such a mess and I mean it's not quite Danny Cannon saying I want to talk because I like the sound of your voice that's my all-time favorite romantic thing from the West Wing but this was pretty right. nice this is pretty sweet especially since they have been a little estranged so that was mm-hmm. lovely um I also like the fact that right. You know, brothers and sisters is, you know, we mostly think of it as the Walker siblings, but there was a lot of emphasis of the brother and sisterliness of Saul and Nora in this too. Right. Um, And I think you could make a drinking game of this every time Saul says, she's my sister. (laughs) Right. 
Of course, I'm protecting her. She's my sister, of course. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell her about the embezzlement. She's my sister, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and, and she says, Nora says to Saul, there's nothing else you're not telling me. <laughs> right. I promise. No, no, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> It's like, yeah, yeah, you're not buying that, are you, really? <sighs> oh, well. And uh, did you notice Lorraine Newman there at the first for about two minutes? Was she the makeup lady? Yes, she was. Yes. And this is her only appearance on Brothers and Sisters. <laughs> really? Yes. So I, was she coming to have lunch with somebody there? And they said, hey, and the actress like, oh. is going to be the makeup lady uh, bailed. Do you want to just come here for five minutes? Right. Always nice to see her, though. Yeah. Yeah, I saw. I, I thought I recognized her, and then I saw her name in the credits, and I was like, oh, so I assumed that she would be back, but <laughs> yeah. I was I, I, I checked in IMDb to see, and I didn't see it, so. Mm. And uh, I enjoyed the acting challenge at the end of uh, Matthew Reese having to eat one of those cupcakes with, like, an inch and a half of frosting on the top (laughs) and eat it in sort of a sexy way. Mm -hmm. It's just like, there's no way to eat that, those cupcakes. No. The human mouth is not made for that (laughs) challenge, but uh, he gave it his best. Yeah. And he, he definitely conveyed that it was a delicious cupcake. (laughs) So I think I mentioned the last episode that, that uh, my, husband had seen some shows that Luke McFarlane was on who plays Scotty. Scotty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was actually just one on Siffy called uh, Killjoys. Okay. But in looking over his IMDb, he seems to have made a great many Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh, so he that's is like lane right now, huh? He is like romantic dude on Hallmark Christmas movies. Lots of them. You can tell oh. they're all Hallmark Christmas movies by the titles. Of course. <laughs> so good for Small you, town Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Right. A holiday, a holly, jolly Christmas where it's about someone named Holly and yeah. so on. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can tell. So it's a little cottage industry for him and good mm-hmm. for him. Um, he is the uh, Lacey Chabert of. Yes. He's the guy version. Of he apparently is. I had no idea. Shaker. I just knew he was in this uh, science fiction thing. I didn't know about the movies, but uh, good for him. Yes. And he's generally delightful on this show. And just, boy, can you imagine you go to, to a party and, and all this drama <laughs> this is happening? Is what <laughs> Jackpot, man. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm coming <laughs> back for more. Those were some good taquitos. <laughs> Yes. And this is clearly the caterer that they always use. <laughs> Good taquitos and the unmitigated torture was kind of funny, too. Right. <laughs> I love it. Well, if you if you ever get invited to a pool party, pool party at the Walkers, um, you know, if you are are actually legitimately a person without secrets and problems, then you just go there and you have yourself some taquitos. It'll be delicious. If you have any secrets, you may want to RSVP no. Because <laughs> right. probably they will come out. They will come out. And g- good advice just in general. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if that makes you want to skip Thanksgiving with the family this week, you know. We won't judge. Yes. You just say COVID. I had a positive COVID test. I'm just staying home. Yes. They didn't have that luxury in 2006. No, back in 2006. They had to show up. And and several of them showed up unannounced or unexpected by most of the other attendees. It's just, uh, yeah, it's interesting way to throw a party. <laughs> uh, but actually, you know what? Sarah invited Scotty. That's true. Did she? Did they, did they have to keep calling the caterer and saying one more, one more, one more? <laughs> I don't think she. Do you think she told her mother that she invited Scotty? I <laughs> <Yeah>. doubt it. <laughs> and Jonathan was unannounced. Like yes, just showed up. So yeah. <laughs> oh it's well. Maybe it's these. Uh, if she has these caterers on speed dial, as she appears to, I, I think they know. How parties They're used go to her, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Budget for about three or four more people, mm-hmm. and you know, don't worry about the dessert because people are going to scatter early. <laughs> and 
And anyways, Scotty brought dessert. That's right. You know, I did wonder when Saul was taking Nora over to the house, Holly was at the funeral. Yeah. Justin saw her, but that doesn't mean that only Justin saw her. Mm -hmm. She wasn't particularly hidden. No, and she was wearing a white dress. So assuming that Nora would not have glanced over and said, oh, I wonder who that is. And then when she saw her at the house, say, hey, you were at my husband's funeral. Right. Which I guess they could have just said, oh, well, I've rented this house for so long. I just wanted to pay my respects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was definitely. That's a weird. I guess you have to chalk it up to she was grief stricken and kind of in shock and wasn't paying attention. That's true. But uh, she does pay attention to some things. Mm -hmm. Gotta Mm -hmm. watch out. (laughs) Okay, well, that will be our dose of walkers for today. Next week, we are going to watch Brothers and Sisters Season 1, Episode 4, Family Portrait. And we are going to watch the movie Spirited on Apple Plus just to get ourselves in the mood for the next holiday on the list. Thanksgiving check, Christmas (laughs) in our sets. (laughs) And that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and our opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.